welcome back to Tip Top Salt. I'm Ross, and today I'm going to discuss the Battle Force reveal. Six battle forces, as we usually see towards the end of the year, of different forces for people to add to their collection, start a new army. Let's see what they are. Now, before I go into each of the battle boxes, I want to really talk about the overall aim of the battle boxes, but things to watch out for as well. So, the aim of the battle boxes really is try and bring a bit of a value for money for the customer. You know, you usually find that there will be a bit of a discount if you were to buy all these separately. There is also, if you check with your local or your online stores, I know this for the UK, I don't really know about the international ones as much, you may find further discounts and there's many of them online who you might get a little bit cheaper on top of this set as well. There's also tradition and nostalgia parts, you know, Games Workshop have been doing these for years, there's a good bit of hype behind it, though looking at the comments, sometimes there is a little bit of negativity as well if the deal isn't particularly ideal. Uh, also, ability to star a new army, you might find that one of these box sets, you know, they have a load of models that you either want to paint, you want to collect, or you want to play with, and you go, that would be an excellent thing to buy. So you might go, yeah, let's start with that force there, and that'd be really cool. However, things to be cautious of. You should want all or close to all the units in the box. Reason for that should be evident. If you find that two or three of the units are just not ones you want, then really you just should buy the separate units separately. You don't want to buy, se you know, these units, you know, they build up if you're not going to actually use them. So if you don't plan to use everything in the box, maybe it's not worth getting. Are all the, you know, the units currently viable in the game or will you just be shoving them on a shelf afterwards? You want to make sure again you're getting the maximum amount out of the box. Uh, are you purchasing these because of hyper excitement or do you actually want these? I've seen this happen once or twice before. People buy a box and then go, uh, don't actually want this and then they're reselling it later on and they're a few quid short. So make sure you do actually want this. And lastly, is your shelf of shame clear? Have you completed all your hobby stuff or are you just going to be adding this more into the pile of shame? I've recently gone through mine and I found quite a few things I need to work on. But there is a bit of temptation here. There is a bit of temptation, I would say. Let's start off with the Space Marines and the Shield Breaker strike first. Who would believe it? There's not a lieutenant in sight. Oh my goodness. So we have a Primaris Captain, we've got three Blade Guard Veterans, we've got ten Intercessors, ten Assault Intercessors, five Heavy Intercessors, and one Storm Speeder, which can, you know, be made into three different varieties there. I have put the overall cost, I believe, from Games Workshop, this would be about £207, which from all of them I believe gives you the most saving out of all of them, surprise, surprise, when it comes to Space Marines. And then in terms of points, it was about 8, 865, 890, depending how you make the Storm Speeder. In terms of the units and their assessment, if I think they're worth it, the Captain is not the one I prefer out of all the loadouts, but it's okay. Blade Guard, Intercessors and Assault Intercessors are all fairly useful, useful depending on your play style. I think they can just about go into any force and you do okay. Heavy Intercessors are less useful, but still okay. I'm currently painting some at the moment. They're actually great models. I really, really like them. I just like the chunkier models of them. And the Storm Speeder of all of them is less useful, but depending on your Legion, might be quite good. So, is this good for new or current players? For new players, great! It's a nice amount of troops, allow you to play around and see which ones you like. For current players, I am less excited. Current players probably don't need all these troops. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Maybe if it was like you were wanting to start... I don't know, I'm going to throw this out here. White scar no, not white scars when it comes to an assault one. What if, you know, basically if you're going for like an assault heavy force and it had a lot more assault intercessors, this would be great. Having it split up of the different types is probably good for beginners, but if you really want to focus in on one legion and you want to have like loads of intercessor ranged, maybe this isn't the fo box for you. But overall, I think it's not a bad box. It's one that I would probably rate quite highly. Uh, maybe not for the caps and maybe not for the storm speeder, but I like the, the troop choice behind it. If you're needing one, two, three of them and maybe you want to up your blade guard, uh, blade guard in them, then yeah, this could do pretty good. Adeptus Sororitas Purgatos mission. Now in this we have a sister dogmata, five celestian sacrosancts, ten battle sisters, one em emulator and one exorcist. Now this comes out to be about £185.50. pence. And then I think in points it's only 515 points in the box. Now that's one of the lighter side 
when it comes to these battle boxes in terms of value for points in the field. Uh, some of them are close to the 900 point mark, I think that's near the top end. So it is a bit of disparity in terms of how many points you're getting in a return. In terms of unit assessment, the Sister Dogmata is a solid buff character. I don't really think you need more than one. Could be wrong in that, but they are pretty solid. The Battle Sisters are always a solid troop, and the Sacrament Synths are a good endurance unit and fairly cheap. I really like the models, so I think they're fairly solid there. The Emulator and the Exorcist, though, really kind of let this box down. The Exorcist does provide long range firepower, and the Exorcist, I mean, I'm almost tempted to say just bring a Rhino, but then again, there is the Flamers as well. So, are these suitable for new or current players? For new players, I think if you like the vehicles, then this is probably a great purchase. However, I would have preferred things like Seferin or Zerfim. They would have been really, really solid units just for mobility and something a bit different. I think they would have been really, really good. Current players, if you're wanting to add a Dogmata or extra Battle Sisters or Sacraments, then yeah, this could be good. But really, you need to want one of the vehicles as well. And maybe some people might not want to. Uh, they are also very challenging sort of painting projects as well, or at least by the looks of it, I think they are. So, really on this one, I'm not giving it as much value as I thought of the Space Marine one, but I still see that it could be quite useful to some players. Next we come to the Adeptus Mechanicus with the Omasaya Talon. In this you're getting one Tech Priest Manipulus, five Patraxis Sterilizers, five Rust Stalkers, three Cere Cerberus Raiders, one Iron Shredder Ballastari and 10 Skatai Rangers. Now I assume that these can all be alternative built, that they will be able to if you choose to build them another way, they should be able to, but don't quote me on that. Now the total value from Games Workshop I believe for this one is £182.50 before any further discounts you can get. Now in terms of points this is 495 again a bit on the cheap side, a lot of these are just basic units, you know the Iron Shredder is quite expensive. But again, a bit more cheaper compared to others. In terms of unit assessment, the Manipulus is a solid choice to boost damage of Rangers and Vanguard. Ranger, uh, the Rangers, the Raiders, the Iron Strider, all staple, may need to get more of each. I know the Iron Strider, really painful. I used to rock uh, when it came to the six of the Dragoons. They were really, really solid. Now, I kind of wish they were Iron Strider Ballastari. But still, the Raiders as well, you might want them in a bigger unit or maybe multiple units in Rangers. I think at the moment you can only do well with loads of them. I've seen competitive lists use, I think, up to 60 or 70 of them. Crazy. There's also the Rust Stalkers and the Patraxi are okay units and usually you only really want one of each. I don't think you really want them to be huge units. There is reasons you could, especially the Patraxi, but maybe you just want one of each. So are these suitable? I think that's a great box set for starters. Admet can be overwhelming force, but I feel this gives you a variety of ways to play. Maybe, you know, if it was like loads of Iron Shredder Ballastaris, people would be elated, but you know, it's got to have a bit of variety into these. And current players, plenty of units here to see that current units, you know, players could be adding new units that they maybe have not bought before. I personally might be buying this one. I have bought a few of the new units and not actually built or painted them myself, so maybe I should work on that first. And I know that Rob has also got a lot of the new Admex stuff, but I am tempted because up in their numbers for me would really be quite a benefit. So I'm going to give this one quite a high rating. Is there better things you could have got? Of course. But I think in terms of adding, you know, a solid troop choice, and different units that might be quite good, even buffing up their numbers. Yeah, I think this is quite solid. Chaos is getting a box set with Death Guard seeing the Plague Fest or Warband. Now in this you're getting one Plague Marine Champion, one Plague Marine Icon Bearer, seven Plague Marines, three Destra Terminators, three Mythic Blight Haulers, and one Plague Burst Crawler, totaling about £185 in, in value and 934 points, which is a higher end of the point scale. However, there is a bit to talk about here. The Champion and Icon Bearer really dislike this, added really to shift units because I I've, I think I've got one of each of these, mainly because I kind of wanted them, but I don't think everyone is going to want these really. Plague Marines are iconic, but when I've been playing them, their low damage really just upsets me a wee bit. I try and play them a bit close combat because bolters for their points just don't seem worth it so much. 
and yeah i'm just kind of like there's other options that are very tough and cause damage as well so plague marines i just feel are in a little bit of a bad place for me personally though there are stratagems to make them a lot more useful mythic blight haulers are okay personally i prefer floated float drones for board control death death shroud terminators are great tough and hit like absolutely well and pre pre burst crawler is a solid addition so what do i think of these for new players, I'm skeptical on this one. The champion and icon should not be in the box, and the mythic takes a lot of the points value actually in this box. It's nearly half of it alone. The blight lords instead of plague marines would have been really good, and a folded instead of the mythic I think would have been a much better call. Current players can't really see many current players adding this. The plague marines and stuff are not so much needed, and yeah, I think a lot of the other stuff are being staples for a while or just don't really grab my attention. Overall, I think this is the worst one. It may be, you know, good value in money, you may get a lot of points to it, but I just don't like the stuff involved. Let me know in the comments on that one below, am I being a little bit unfair? Next up we come to some Xenos forces and we have Necrons with the World Scour Legion, which I absolutely love the name of. In this we have a Psychomancer, 10 Necron Warriors with 3 Scarabs, 1 Locust Heavy Destroyer, 3 Ophidian Destroyers, 5 Flayed Ones and 2 Canoptic Doomstalkers. And this comes to roughly about £190 and about 70, 755 points. Now in terms of what I think of the units, the Psychomancer I don't think is definitely not the best of those sort of Cryptex, I would almost proxy as a Technomancer to buff the Canoptic Doomstalkers. I think that's the one that buffs them. With the Warriors and Scarabs, they're always quite useful, though there is other ways to buy them that may be more affordable, just with the starter box sets. But then again, you might end up with Space Moons with that, and you don't want that. Flayed Ones and Doomstalkers can be great, but you need more of each. I think that the Doomstalkers work well as if you've got three of them, possibly and then they're buffed by a uh, cryptic, then they do really, really well. And then the flayed ones, yeah, you can have multiple small units and they might be quite good to deep strike in. As for the Locusts and the Ophidians, they are nice, but not the best choice. I actually really love the Ophidians, I think they're absolutely fantastically cool models. The Locusts I'm less, less keen on. So for new players, I think this is actually very, very nice. Some great units, though you might need to actually buff them up a wee bit. Maybe the flayed ones, you might want to make them a bigger unit so that when they come in, they can absolutely shred. Um, maybe, if, again, if you have them as small harassing units, they can be quite good. Proxy the Psychomancer, because frankly, out of all the Cryptex, I think this one is the coolest, or at least in my biased opinion. So I've always said in friendly games, look, can I proxy the cryptex as I need them? And most people have gone, yeah, no problem. So yeah, put that one as a tentative answer, boost the Doomstalkers, fantastic. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I got the wrong one for the Doomstalkers, but I'm pretty sure it's a tentative answer. And then for current players, the Warriors are probably not what people are looking for. However, if you are looking to upgrade your old school Necrons, this could be a fantastic way, as there's so many new units in this one. And finally we come to the Kill Daka Warband. So in this one we get a Death Killer Wartrike, one Big Mech with a Shock Attack Gun, 5 Knobs, 20 Orc Boys of the new variety, 10 Gretchen with a Runt Herd Handler, 1 Daka Jet, and the total cost for that I believe is about £175 and it's about 680 points. So what do I think of these? Uh, the Wartrike is generally quite a good unit, it's pretty excellent. Uh, it's different to what's in the start collecting set which I think is the general feel for a lot of these forces in here and that's quite good the problem is it doesn't really have any protection so that can be a bit of a weakness boys are generally very very good as well every orc player should have boys in them in their collection Gretchen and the big mech good for backfield playing or shield in the Gretchen case Dakajet at the moment very very popular though with the recent changes to rules maybe less so and the knobs are struggling a little to find a use this is probably definitely the least useful in the set. So do I think these are use useful? Yeah, the, for new players, and this is fantastic value for money, it's a bit of unit variety, great way to experience different ways to play orcs. Current players, really good value to bolster your current force or upgrade your old boys to a new range. I have seen a fantastic meme of someone giving what they thought was the, the best box set, and I won't lie, it was a fantastic one. Uh, but in general I think this one is not bad if you are wanting to upgrade your boys or have new boys 
this would be quite good. If you don't have a wart trike, this is quite cool as well. And the jet as well. Generally, I'm actually tempted to buy this one as well, as I have just started orcs. I need plenty more boys in my collection. That's tempting me alone to get this one. Well, that is my thoughts on the Battle Force. What I'd encourage you is to please comment below. Am I wrong? If I am, let me know. But ultimately, that's also for other viewers. If you think there's better deals or better ways to go about it, let them know. There might be some of these sets you think are absolutely not worth getting. I'm looking at one in particular I definitely don't think is a particularly good deal. And maybe it's good to hear from maybe some of the players, because I don't play all these forces, on what you think that if they're worth getting or not. I personally quite like quite a few of them. Most of these models are 8th edition or newer. There's very few that are beforehand and I think that's quite good because the last thing I'd want to see is some of the older models getting pushed out where they might actually be upgraded in several years time. It is very unlikely nearly any of these models might be upgraded. Probably the ones I'd look at if any are maybe the knobs but after it's just coming out I highly doubt that. So I feel there is a bit of longevity with these battle forces as well. So please comment, share, like and subscribe. Are you tempted to pick any of these up? I am tempted by two of them. Just either upgrade my forces. In fact, yes, and almost entirely upgrade my forces. But I did look at my cupboard of shame and I have so much to paint. I really should be working on that. So will I give in and buy one? I do not know, but we'll find out. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you on our Tabletop Assault Battle Report.